Well, hi there. This is a snake. This is a false water cobra. And it is venomous. And this is a snake. This is a ball python. And this is also a ball python. If you haven't noticed, not all snakes are the same. These differences can be in the way that a snake looks, the way that it acts, and the things that it can do. For example, the false water cobra can flatten out its neck into a hood, and it can make venom. The ball pythons, they can't do either of those things, but they can detect heat with heat pits, something that the false water cobra cannot do. You probably noticed that even my two ball pythons are not exactly the same. Even within a species, there are differences between individuals. These differences between individuals are called variation. Odds are that you've never seen another person that looks just like you. And you might have also noticed that even though you don't look just like your parents, there are some similarities. You might look a bit like your siblings as well. That is because many of the things that make you distinct from most other people can be inherited. They're heritable. And those things that you inherited from your parents can potentially be passed on to your children and from your children to their children and so on. It actually works the same way with these snakes. And something about variation is that not all of it works as well in every environment. For example, our yellow ball python, it might do really well in a field of dry yellow grass or in a yellow sand desert. Its yellow coloration might help it hide from both its predators and its prey. But it might not do so well if the ground happens to be dark brown. The opposite might be the case for our brown and black ball python. It might do great where the ground is dark brown, but not so well in the dry grass or the yellow sand. Thus, in an environment where the snake happens to blend in, it will be more likely to survive and reproduce than in an environment where it doesn't blend in. And when it reproduces, it passes on its genes, its heritable variation, to the next generation. If the environment stays the same for many generations, the variants that increase the likelihood of reproducing, being passed on, become more and more common in the population compared to the variants that do not increase the likelihood of reproducing. This process is called natural selection. This is very similar to what we've seen in the domestication of plants and animals by humans for thousands of years, where people were choosing which variants were preferable and preferentially breeding those until the entire population changed. The only difference here is that instead of humans doing the selecting, other factors in the environment, such as food availability, rainfall, temperature, predators, prey, and competitors, were determining which variants were getting passed on and which ones were not. And this process can, over multiple generations, make a big impact on a population, especially if that population is large and contains a lot of variation. Without variation, only two things can happen. A population can go on exactly as it is, with only the number of individuals changing, or it can go extinct. And now you know. If you learned something from this video, or at least found it useful, please drop a like. If you'd like to see more videos like this in the future, please subscribe and click that little bell. And we hope to see you real soon. Bodacious.